Hey guys, Vivids, and welcome back to another video. So this is going to be the first episode of my fast questing guide series. And basically what I'm, what I'm going to be doing is, is showing you guys how to do quests in the quickest manner possible. And you know, when I watch quest guides on YouTube and things, I basically like to see, you know, the quickest way to get through the quest because I'm not really interested in the storyline. I just want to get either the rewards or just, um... Or, you know, you just just finish the quest as soon as I can because I need it for completion escape or things like that. Um, but today's quest is going to be the World Wake, so I hope you guys enjoy. If you're new, feel free to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, all that, do all that good stuff. Um, but, you know, to begin, make sure you start by having your armor and weapons. Um, I used a Void with uh, Fury and, you know, Steadfast Boots and my, yeah, so full Void and a Chaotic Maul for high DPS against Armadil, which is going to be one of the first... Um, one of the first bosses you're going to be coming against, and uh, you know the fact that I'm max combat and I managed to do some, I can manage to do some hectic DPS. So I really, I really don't take as much damage while fighting the monsters because you know if the first set of monsters are pretty easy, and you know using void doesn't really have that much defense bonus. So I also use the sign of life, you know, just in case I died somehow. So I recommend do, I like, I do recommend using a sign of life if you have one. And uh, you know for the pots, I would, you know, I would recommend using extremes or overloads. It's up to you. And uh, you know with the prayer pots, you're going to use prayer pots to restores. And I also use rock tails for food. But you can get away with sharks, you know, if you're high level. So to begin, so to begin the World Wags quest, you want to teleport to Sears Village and run south to the, um, you know, south to the quest start. And basically, when you're there, you know, it's it's west of the Legends Guild. So if you want to use an Arty teleport, feel free. But I use the Sears the Sears Village teleport lodestone. So you know, feel free to use that. And basically, when you get there, talk to Orlando Smith to begin the quest. And um, you know, choose the first option first option twice and accept the quest and then you want to run through the door and scroll you know through the text as soon as you you know once you through the door so basically in this room you have to investigate the shattered blade in the southern part of the room the dusty past the dusty parchment in the southeastern corner of the room and then the stone carvings on all the wall now you really only have to search those three I think you can search some other stuff as well but you only have to search those you know those three things to actually progress to the to the quest so basically once you've searched through all of these head through to the east wall so in the next room, make sure you hold space bar until the monsters are attacking you. And you know, the, mas the mistake I made was I kept, like, I would either click you know, on the overload or I click through the, um, you know, click on one of the monsters or something like that. Because what it actually does is if you actually click away instead of just holding space bar, it will actually cancel, it will cancel the cutscene and it will restart the cutscene. So make sure you just hold space bar until you actually, um, you know, until the, until the monsters start attacking you. So once you've scrolled all the way through the text, you've actually got to kill... Um, three automatons, and they're pretty easy, but you, they can absolutely destroy you if you don't run away from their smash attack. Uh, every now and again, they'll all they all hit the floor at the same time, and to avoid their attack, just run away from them until they calm their titties McGee down. On the whole, these guys are pretty simple though. Just use soul split and turmoil, or some sort of protect from range, and some you know offensive prayers to do as much DPS as you can, and you know get these automatons finished with. But after you kill the last monster, um, just hold space bar and choose the first options through the text just to progress through to the next stage. And the next part of the quest requires you to kill Armadil or Kuriara, so make sure you use your pots before you actually speak to her, and once you've spoken to her, just hold space bar and choose the second, op second option, and then use the first option to initiate the fight. And if you max combat like me, the best thing to actually do is to focus on um, is focus on doing as much damage as possible to Kriara like DPS. And as soon as she says storms aligned to me, run behind the gypsy looking tree, like in the spot that I'm, you know, in the spot that I am. And to you have to avoid the twirly looking things because you know. If 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 they actually catch you, they do a, a lot a lot of damage. So make sure um make sure you lure her in the spot that I have, and then basically once the storms go past, go back out and attack her, and then just out DPS her until she's dead. Um and once you've obviously passed the storms and you know they've gone past you, just focus on um focus on staying away from the storms because they deal a lot of damage. But uh, if you don't have soul split, just use protect from magic and some sort of offensive prayers. But essentially, uh, once you've killed Kree, and by kill I mean you know get to her to lose zero life points because she doesn't actually die, she'll start to walk away and uh, then proceed to the, through the eastern door. When I did the quest, I was an idiot and I ran like west back to the start, so I was a very I was idiotic in that sense. But just make sure you run to the east and go through the closet door there, and you'll be greeted by another cutscene. So just wait it out, and then you obviously hold spacebar if you need to until it's finished, and then just activate the control panel, and June and a bunch of other her biddies will spawn, so just hold spacebar to skip through the text, and then click on the control panel again to start the maze. So the next part of the quest is arguably, arguably the most difficult, but in all honesty, the fight later is, um, but it is quite simple as long as you follow the paths that I draw on screen. So basically, the goal is to re release a boulder from one corner of the maze and get have it roll through the path onto uh, one of the four green activation pad thingos, and obviously, I'll speed up me changing the tracks on screen, but I'll also leave 
I'll also leave, um, I'll, I mean, I'll also put on screen the paths to each maze because you have to create four different paths for boulders to follow on the same map, and if that makes sense at all, um, but be sure to check the description as well because I'll, I'll leave each map for you guys to see, you know, so you can perhaps have the picture open at one half of the screen or a different monitor while doing some maze at the same time. Uh, but I did get confused the first time doing this because I thought there were four actual different physical mazes. But it then came to my realization that uh, all four boulders, like all four boulder paths, are created on the same physical maze. Just so, just take that into account. And another thing to notice is when the boulder is actually rolling uh, through the completed path, it actually gets stopped by the ring-looking things called brakes. And these can really assist you because you will notice the track. Uh, that has the bold, like the, the blue or the yellow dots inside, they actually keep rotating and the boulder will explode if it tries to roll across the track and it like, and the track's not actually facing in the right direction. And so that's fine because all you have to do is let the boulder um, free. Like if it's, if it's caught in the brake, wait till the actual, um, wait till the track turns in the right, you know, in the right direction and then you can um, release it. But that's basically all, all you need to know for the uh, maze bit. So once you've done the maze, uh, the, next, the, the next part requires you to even up the chaos, order, good and evil bars. So these are quite easy. And the, the easiest way I found to do this was to click on the chaos, order, good, evil chart picture in the description. I'll be sure to leave that. Or you can just go and tip it and type in the world wakes and look for the, um, obviously just the chart, which is like in about in the middle of the quest. And basically just check on screen for the possible solutions to even up the bars. So basically... Um, what you have to do is to get past this part, all you have to do is fill up the bar like to halfway. So that's basically two of each and uh, indicated by the little white line inside each bar. So there's like a little light, white line in each bar. So make sure you fill it up to the, um, the little white line in each bar. And uh, basically, in other words, you only have to boost each trait twice. And like I said before, and if you overbalance them, you just have to restart, which is, uh, which is not really much of a problem. But basically, once you pass the stage, choose the first option three times and assign uh, Chaelder and Theorisk to the first symbol, Krez to the second symbol, Death to the third symbol, and Voluta and Fiara to the, th to the last symbol. And when you actually assign, all this does is, for example... Once you assign Chaelder and Therisk to the first one, the first one is actually General Grador. So basically, once you actually go in to fight General Grador, um, Chaelder and Therisk will actually help you, you know, defeat the boss. So that's basically, when you assign, that's what you're actually doing. But now is for the most fight-intensive part of the quest. So basically, resupply at the bank, which is close by, because you will be fighting General Grador first. And uh, I use exactly the same gear that I used against Armadil, and it was very effective. So obviously, that's the Void with uh, my Chaotic Maul. And the only real thing to note when fighting Grador is his multi-hit special attack. When he yells Grador, protect, just run a few squares away from him if you don't want to get hit. But I only managed to, oh, you know, I, I managed to tank it just fine, so you shouldn't really worry about it too much. But if you're a lower level, obviously, just make sure you pay attention to that. And just make sure your health is high. Like when he kill, like, and when he's killed, just, and he walks away, you can leave the room and prepare for your next fight against the Zamorgul boss. So make sure you've assigned Krez to the Zamorga boss, and to know if you've done so, check the northernmost passage to see if Krez is standing outside, obviously. And once you've resupplied from the nearby bank, head through the northernmost passageway and hold spacebar to skip through the text. Uh, throughout this fight, portals will actually spawn around the room, and you have to destroy them before attacking Zamorgul. And uh, obviously, if you don't, you won't be able to actually deal any damage to him or her, whatever the hell Zamorgul is, and you won't be able to kill him. There are also two different portals to look out for. One is the purple portal, and the other one is like a dark pink or like a reddish portal. And basically, they do the same thing. So just destroy them as soon as you can before attacking Zamorgul. Now, throughout the fight, there will be a McGee ton of monsters attacking you. So remember to soul split if you have it, or protect from range, um, and stay very aware of your life points at all times, and eat when necessary. It's because they obviously can deal a lot of damage with the amount of monsters actually attacking you. Um, so once you've defeated him, hold space, space bar and scroll through all the text and resupply at the bank once again. The next box, the next box, the Xbox, you reckon? Uh, but the next box, you'll, the next, the next boss you will be killing is actually the Zamorokian boss, and he is through the southern, the southwestern, the southwesternmost passage. And I've been told that fighting Zami in this quest is similar to fighting him in God Wars Dungeon Hard Mode, but I've never really fought him in God Wars on Hard Mode, so I'm not sure if that's actually correct. But his first two special attacks involve him spawning deadly spikes on the floor. So as soon as um, he shouts, you cannot stand against Zamorok Might, uh, make sure you move a few squares away, obviously, to avoid any damage. 
but his next special attack is actually triggered once he says run coward and it's really important that you run out of his path because he chucks a remnant and actually charges right at you and that can obviously deal some hefty damage so um, that's basically his last special attack you just have to worry about those two special attacks and uh, once you've done that he'll just walk away and um, basically out try and out DPS him and obviously just finish the fight and he'll walk away and then leave leave the room and rebank. So the last boss you have to fight is actually called uh, Inakura. Um, and he is actually in the southernmost passage. And he's by far the most difficult. So after fighting him, you won't actually be able to bank either. So you have to take that in mind. Try and bring as much. Um, I'm not sure if you can bring a yak. So if this is like if you're a high level doing this quest, I would try and bring a yak. But I obviously didn't use one. And one of my main problems throughout this fight was I thought I was actually doing something wrong because he actually continued to heal and I thought I couldn't really do enough damage to kill him through his heals. So I did try to leave the room multiple times and I also tried suiciding to obviously leave and then, you know, try and look up another video on how to do it. But it turns out that he really, he really just can't kill you at all because when you're red barred, like you'll notice in the video, um, he, he only hits a maximum of like 40s and 50s. So he really, really does struggle to kill you. And I used dual chaotic throughout this fight just because I was going for the maximum DP. Yes, I could um, to do more damage to him than he was actually healing. So I just basically your um, your dual chaotix or dual dry goals if you have them, just use them to try and get as much damage as you can to obviously overwrite his heals. And I also switched out my void for my defensive armor. Um, I obviously use bandos because you know it's, it's reasonably cheap, and it was just to get that extra defense boost against him. And uh, you also must have anticipate freedom and backhand on your ability bar to withstand his special attacks. Now throughout the fight, uh, just use anticipate as soon as it's as soon as it's recharged, like as much as you can, because it actually gives you a defensive buff like while making you immune to any stuns. And um, it's really helpful regarding the amount of damage Anakura actually deals along with his stunning special attack. His first special attack involves him healing after yelling Zamorok, give me the strength to heal, and to prevent him from healing so much, make sure you to make sure you use the backhand or kick abilities, it, either one. Um, and that basically stuns him so he doesn't heal as much or stops him from healing at all. But as soon as you've stunned him, you have to keep focusing on your DPS to out-hit him uh, because... You have, you have to try and out DPS as, mu as much as you can to get him to, your, to his next special attack because the, the healing one can be really, really, really annoying. Um, but now it's extremely important that you are focusing on using Anticipate as soon as it recharges because his next special attack essentially freezes you and he holds you on the ground until you either use Freedom or just tank it out. Because um, if you manage to use Anticipate before you use a special attack, you don't even have to worry about using Freedom or any um, anti-stun abilities. But the chances are that he will actually hold you on the floor and try to touch your willy, <laughs> pretty much. Um, so the best way to avoid this for the first time is to use the freedom ability. And if he holds you down the second time and your freedom really just isn't charged, just make sure you eat and spam click on an acro because he can only hold you down for a certain amount of time. And like I said before, don't worry if he continues to heal. Just make sure you backhand, uh, you backhand him or you know just kick him and continue to wreck him with ultimate abilities. And uh, you should be able to manage. You should manage to out DPS him. He's a lot. He seems a lot scarier than he actually is. He's pretty easy in the end. Um, but once he's been defeated, just exit the door to the south. So the next step, um, just speak to Krez and skip to the text by holding spacebar, and then head towards Juna. And a bunch of Sarodome and dudes will spawn. So just kill them off. And the aim of this next part is actually to protect. Uh, is to protect Juna until the time lasted bar. Yeah, the time lasted bar fills up completely. And in order to keep Juno alive, you have to repair the barricades and kill the Sarodome and Peeps. And the fastest way to repair the barricades is to actually spam click left on them. And I also recommend jumping over the fence and then repairing them from Juno's side um, of the fence because you don't actually take any damage from the Sarodome and dudes from over there. But I didn't think of that until I actually finished the quest. Um, but the most difficult thing about this is actually monitoring the three fences because you may be protecting the middle fence extremely well, but the other fences on the north and south side may be taking a lot more damage and may be put down. Um, but if somehow all three fences are broke, you just focus on killing the side and Pete's because they are they are the ones doing all the damage to Juna. Um, but if you can, make sure you keep all of the fences up by spam by spam left clicking on them to repair them. And you really won't have to do this for very long because the time lasts the bar fills up reasonably quickly. So just make sure you are repairing the fences and killing Sardom and Pete's, you know, as quick as like, as soon as they spawn and stuff. So when the time lasts the bar is completely filled up, a tit ton of cutscenes will occur. So this is like the cutscene central. So just use escape to skip them, unless you're Laurie, then feel free to watch them all and make take notes and stuff. Um 
But once the cutscene's over, run east through the shattered wall, and the next part requires you to actually run to the end of the path without getting killed by the purple ball things. And now I found that the easiest way to do this was to wait until the second wave of, pur of purple ball spawned, uh, and then run close behind one purple ball, as you can see on the video. But when you're actually running through, the stalagmites will fall from the ceiling. So just spam left click on them to break them and then continue running because they can be an absolute pain in the buttocks. Because if they stop you and then the purple ball comes behind you, it can actually like one hit you. So um, that happened to me a couple of times. So don't worry if you keep dying on this pipe because you can just get really lucky at some points if you die. And um, I recommend coming back with no gear and, you know, no gear at all like I did. And you should be able to do it in the first couple of times. It's not too difficult. It's just a little bit of a pain in the bottom. But that's basically the quest complete now. You just have to sit through another tit ton of cutscenes. And I couldn't press escape to skip for some reason. So I absolutely got Jagex. So I have to sit through them. Um, but basically, when you spawn on the gypsy looking island, just follow the path until your very end. And occasionally, some dude will, um, you know, will try and interact with you. So just skip through all the text. It's just, a, it's just text central. Because apparently, it's a very, very important quest. And now it's absolutely, it's raining hardcore outside right now. Um, but... Get to the very, very end, and when you get to the very end, speak to Juna, and you have to make sure that you actually have nine inventory spots free to claim your reward. But apart from that, um, that should be the quest complete. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quest series, and it was, you know, it was took me quite a little while to make it. So I would appreciate likes and stuff. But if you like this sort of quest guide series, be sure to let me be sure to let me know with a comment and the likes and stuff. But apart from that, guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>